The old idea that a woman can only serve her nation through her home is gone. So now in time, on you the responsibility rests. Countess Markovich, member of the Easter Rising. In April 1916, the Easter Rising occurred in Ireland. This was one of the first steps Ireland took as a nation towards freedom. Of those who partook in the Rising were Irish women who fought for their freedom as well as Ireland's freedom. Among those women who came from all different walks of life were Winnie Carney, the first woman in Belfast to be a shorthand typist, Maud Gunn, the founder of an organization that inspired Irish women to push for Ireland's freedom and women's rights, and Hannah Skehe Skeffington, a feminist who largely impacted the rights of Irish women many years before and after the Rising occurred. Stationed everywhere across Dublin, these women stood side by side with the men. This is an important example of people, especially women, taking a stand in history. Women of the 1916 Irish Easter Rising. English Habitation in Ireland. In 1169 CE, Ireland was invaded by England, which marked the beginning of an 800-year British rule of the land. Oliver Cromwell was an important dictator in the beginning roots of Irish oppression. Cromwell's effects on Ireland was a centuries-long wound that the Irish women and men bore until 1916 when the Easter Rising took place. During England's rule of Ireland, there were many signs of English discrimination towards the Irish. One of the most massive examples of how the English discriminated against the Irish was the Irish Potato Famine, which lasted from 1845 until 1852. During this famine, when the potato crop caught a blight, the English shipped much food from Ireland. Workhouses were exemplified during this time, offering little relief to the poor. In addition to the economic factors, there were religious hostility. In media, the Irish were depicted as ape-like and illiterate. The Assembling of the Cumannamon Two years before the Easter Uprising, Irish women took a stand, setting into motion the resistance. On April 2nd, 1914, 100 women, some who had already been part of the Anin Naharin, the Daughters of Ireland, gathered in Wynne's Hotel in Dublin at a meeting led by Agnes O'Farelli, a novelist of the time. The Cumann Naman was created as the female auxiliary to the Irish volunteers, as the women weren't allowed to join male nationalist groups. Cumann Naman were the yeah. women's group, but both Frank and Hannah, Hannah in particular, said I'm not joining that because that's subservient to the decision making. Body. Women of the Rising The women who fought in the Rising were all extremely different. Marie Winifred Winnie Carney, born on December 4, 1887 on the Falls Road in County Down, a location with a history of rioting as far back as the 18th century, ensured that she was immersed into the same traditions of rebellion as her forefathers. Carney, one of the first women in Belfast to qualify as a secretary and shorthand typist, used her gift of writing throughout her life to liberate those who had been discriminated against, giving a voice to the forgotten labor workers with her involvement in the Irish Textile Workers Union. Through a national progression of socialist trade union activity, she moved into republicanism, joining Belfast No. 1 branch of Cumann League of Women. Maud Gunn was awakened to the Irish cause after being introduced to the revolutionary nationalist movement by Finian John O'Leary and poet William Butler Yeats. Though spending most of her life in France, in Ireland she was a prominent activist for feminist, nationalist, and socialist causes. These passions led her to found the organization Anine Naharin, the Daughters of Ireland. The Daughters of Ireland supported women's suffrage in the Irish Ireland movement. Programs pertaining to purely Irish culture were offered to help enforce nationalism. Additionally, the journal, Bean Naharin, Irish Woman, was edited by Maud Gunn and published. In 1914, the Anin Naharin became part of the newly formed Cumann Naman. Gunn voiced her firm opinions in the use of physical force to gain Irish freedom. Though she did not play any part in the fighting that took place during Easter week of 1916, Gone indirectly took part in the Rising through her establishment of the Anin Naharin. Hannah Skehe Skeffington was born on May 24, 1877, and from a young age was engaged in the Republican struggle, as her father was part of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. In 1908, she founded the Irish Women's Franchise League with Margaret Cousins and her husband Francis as a way to pursue civic rights as well as play a large role as a militant suffragette organization. 
On June 13, 1912, Hannah took part in the smashing of Dublin Castle's windows in protest of the omission of women from the Third Home Rule Bill Treaty. By throwing rocks at the windows of Dublin Castle, her and other women were symbolically destroying male domination in Ireland. Even though Hannah supported Irish freedom, she was against the treaty and thought that by signing it, the full potential for the freedom of Irish women would be stunted and that Ireland would take steps backwards versus forwards. Although the Constitution fell short of her visions for full gender equality, Skeffington considered the Easter Rising the first point in Irish history where both the struggle for women's citizenship and national freedom converged. Skeffington was a pioneering woman who pushed the boundaries that society had placed on her and took a stand for gender equality between men and women through her writing and her acts of defiance against the British. The Rising on Easter Monday, April 24, 1916, Rebel Patrick Pierce read the Irish proclamation from the steps of the Dublin General Post Office, guaranteeing Irish freedom. There were over 200 women who took part in the Rising in Dublin, including Carney and Skeffington. The Rising took place over a matter of days in which a group of Irish rebels and nationalists, consisting of about 1,600 people, took control over several buildings within Dublin, the most prominent being the General Post Office, GPO. There was at least one woman situated at almost every station around Dublin. Women played vital parts against the British and were messengers, gun runners, and took part in the fighting. As the rebels marched through Dublin, people of the city spit and threw rotten food at them, showing their strong distaste and lack of respect towards the rebellion at hand. At the beginning of the conflict, there were only 400 British troops, and so fighting was delayed on the British side until reinforcements came. By April 28th, 19,000 British troops had come to Dublin. The amount of rebels was small, as there was confusion on the date of the Rising, for it was initially going to be Good Friday, April 21st, but was hastily changed to Easter Monday. On the day of the Rising, Carney was the first woman to arrive at the location of the Rising before dawn. She showed up on site with her typewriter and Weebly pistol and is further recognized as the typist with the Weebly. During the Rising, Carney was side by side with Connolly and typed out dispatches and mobilization orders from the GPO. In the fighting, James Connolly was wounded and Winnie was ordered to retreat the GPO, but she refused to leave his side until he was arrested. In the end, the Easter Rising proved to be a failure, with approximately 485 people dead, several of whom were women rebels, and 2,600 injured. But that didn't stop the Irish people from being stirred. Though Ireland wasn't immediately declared a free state, the Irish were angered and more rebellion continued throughout the country until Irish freedom in 1922. Imprisonment of the Rebels Within nearly three weeks of the Rising being over, all of the signatories of the Irish Proclamation had been executed. Immediately after their deaths, the men became martyrs and the anger of the Irish was awakened. Carney was held prisoner in Kilmayham Jail, along with other rebels. Post-Easter Rising Ireland In England's 1918 general election, the Irish Republican Party, the Sinn Féin, won most of the Irish seats. In January of 1919, there was a meeting in Dublin Castle to create an Irish Parliament that thus created the Irish Free State, today the Republic of Ireland. After Carney was released from prison, she was still part of several Republican activities. She was involved in the Sinn Féin, and though she wasn't elected, Carney was a candidate for Central East Belfast during the elections in 1918, where she continued to advocate for labor politics. Hannah Schiehe Skeffington was still vocal about equality between men and women. In 1919, she was the Sinn Féin's executive. Ireland, present day. Without the 1916 Easter Rising, Ireland may cease to be a free state. Though the rebellion was inefficient and considered folly, it helped awaken the restrained anger of the Irish people, which further set up actions towards Irish freedom. The rising not only caused national fury towards the English, but it helped fuel later political events that resulted in Ireland being a standalone country. Women's rights also became a subject of conversation and women were mentioned in the Irish proclamation as equals. All in all, the Easter Rising was influential to the freedom of Ireland.